We have a good number of analytical balances in the lab. We have six lined up on the west wall. And we also have some located um, along the east wall under the windows. Uh, there's uh, maybe five or six of those there as well. So you should be able to access those pretty easily. So the model of balance we have are Mettler Toledo XS 204s. At m maximum, they can weigh 220 grams of material. And if we open this up, you can actually see that that is written here on the balance itself. It also says that D equals 0.1 milligrams. And what that is telling you is that the air associated with this balance is 0.1 milligrams. Okay. So, um, a couple other things with this balance. If you look towards the back, you can see the last time it was calibrated. It was almost a year ago at this point. Um, and the very front is uh, sort of the important part. This is where you'll actually be able to tell the mass of what you're weighing. So right now you can see that it's weighing a negative mass. We know that that's not real. Um, what we need to do is tear the balance. And so this button here, the T with the arrows, uh, that will tear the balance. You push that. Uh, right now it's telling me press zero to, to zero it. Okay, so we'll do that. And uh, at this point, the balance is ready to use. You can see that it's uh, reading uh, 0 0.0000 grams. Okay. Uh, let me talk a little bit about the doors on this. So you'll notice there's these sliders and as you can see it opens up both sides of the uh, balance itself. Okay. And um, there's also a top door you could push back All right, for extra tall things or if you wanted to access from the top. I find that these side doors are the easiest to use. There's another cool feature, if you pull down on this little tab here, you can then open one door at a time. Okay. So act to reactivate the two doors at a time, you just flip that back up. One of the things about this balance that's a little bit finicky is this balance pan. So let me open this door. And uh, you'll see that these little, there's a little pin here, and this balance pan is hanging on that pin. Okay, so there's two pins it's hanging from there. I'm just going to take this off, and this just lifts right up. If you needed to clean under there, you could take this off. If you have a brush, you could clean off the any solids that have fallen down under there. But getting this pan back on is somewhat tricky, so you have to sort of tip it up and let it fall down and do this very gently. Um, if you do this incorrectly, what may happen is that, let me see if I can force this to happen. Oh, this one did it. So you can see there's a little bit of a gap between the pin and this hook part of the balance pan. You need to make sure that that's pushed down. You see that gap's gone now? That is going, that's the proper way of doing, of, of this balance. If, it, if this is askew, it's not gonna weigh correctly. So when you get to a balance, uh, you should probably check that the hooks are hanging properly uh, before you start measurements. Okay, so let me take you through a bit of a procedure uh, for weighing. There's a couple of different methods. Uh, the one that you're most familiar with, I, th I think it's called weighing by addition, but mostly people just call it weighing. So. Uh, you'll notice I'm wearing one of these very thin cotton gloves. This is a weighing glove. If you use a weighing glove, I'd like you to keep it for the semester. Keep it in your cupboard. Um, these are cheap, but they're reusable for a decent amount of time until they get really dirty. So let's keep these uh, in your cupboard. And the reason I'm using a weighing glove is I don't want the oils on my hands getting on the glass that I'm, that I'm weighing. That will affect the measurement. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to weigh uh, some material for use uh, to making solutions and things like that. I'm gonna use a weighing bottle. This is the best thing you have in your drawer. 
for weighing out material. Um, we don't have uh, weigh boats and weigh paper in the lab. Um, we expect you to use this to be a little bit more uh, green in that case. Uh, so if we have a material that doesn't absorb or adsorb water from the air, it's not hygroscopic, we can just use the weighing bottle without the lid. I'm just going to put that on there. You'll notice I'm wearing this thin cotton glove. This is a weighing glove. Um, basically what it's doing is it's preventing any oils from my skin getting onto that weighing bottle. It helps uh, keep things, uh, helps make things more accurate. So I put my weighing bottle on there. I'm going to wait a second. I'm going to try not to bump the bench. And then I will tear. Hopefully we'll get a zero. Yes, we do. If you end up with uh, the numbers maybe be not exactly zero and it's it's changing just a little bit in that last decimal place, hit tear again after things have settled down. Sometimes you need to wait for the doors uh, to close and things like that. Okay, so now I've got a zero reading. So let's say we want to weigh 0.1 grams of sodium chloride, which is not hygroscopic. So I'm just going to take my sodium chloride, opening both doors, and uh, using my spatula, I'm just going to add material until I get about 0.1 grams. That's close. There we go. So one of the rules is that you never put material back into a vial or um, a, a reagent bottle. That's just to make sure you haven't contaminated anything. If we don't need to be completely accurate, uh, or it would only to be exactly at 0.1 grams, which you never really will, okay? Just take this reading, and that is your mass, all right? Okay, so close the doors, and let the reading become stable, and that is your mass. Let's see if I bump the table here, what happens? Yeah, so if you see, if you see if I, that I bump the table, and the reading jumps up, uh, this is a good idea to, um, to to be careful when you're leaning up against the table or uh, other people are around. Just make sure that things are, are stable. No one's being too rowdy when they get to the, the balance table. Okay. So this is essentially weighing by addition. Um, it's basically the way that most people will weigh things. Now let's say, though, that you want to weigh something that is hygroscopic. And let's put a bunch of sodium chloride in this weighing bottle to make it a little easier. Okay, so we've got our material. Let's say we've dried this in the oven. It's something hygroscopic. We're pretending at this point. We've got it in our weighing bottle. I put the lid on so that water doesn't absorb into the material. And weighing by difference, essentially what you do here is you put that weighing bottle with the lid on the balance and you tear. And then um, using a gloved hand, you may need two gloves at this point, you're going to take some material out. In the background here, taking out some material, putting it in a container that I'm going to use. So if I'm weighing into a, so I might be putting it into a flask or something like that. I just forgot my lid. Put my lid on. And now you'll see that I'm reading the negative mass. This is the mass that was transferred into my flask or beaker or whatever it may be. So that's how you weigh something uh, that's hygroscopic. That's called weighing by difference.